Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video tour. Today we're going to take a look at this brand new 2024 Salem Villa 353 FLFB destination trailer. This is the smallest destination trailer that Salem currently builds. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you through the inside and outside of this RV and show you what this thing's all about. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, we are now up inside the brand new 2024 Salem Villa 353 FLFB model here. As you've seen on the floor plan that was up, this is a two slide out, rear bedroom, front living room kind of setup. We're gonna start off back here in the back and we'll kind of work our way forward for you. So first things up back here in the back, there is a pretty large closet right here quite a bit of storage space have some big drawers down below and then there's another cabinet over there we'll check out when we get to that side you have an entry exit door with screen door here coming in and out of your master bedroom right here and there's some light switches and we have the VersaTilt bed button and a slide button right here so back on the rear wall, you're gonna have big window overlooking the rear end of the RV. Little side window there on the side of the slide as well. There's TV hookups back here, so you could put your TV back here if you wanted to. Big storage hole here. And some more storage space down below here. Now there is plenty of room to maneuver around the bed area here. Pretty good amount of overhead cabinet space as well. It's got a little shock assist on it. Electric outlet, USB charger port on each side, a little end table on each side of the bed. Now this one has two ACs on it. So you got two ducted Coleman ACs. There's one located right there. Digital thermostat to control it over here on the wall. Now this VersaTilt bed, you can hit the button, bring this thing up. And when you bring it up, it also makes it more roomy here at the foot of the bed. And then you hit the button to basically just lower it back down. Now they put the button over here out of the way because they do not want you trying to surf on the bed when it's going up and down. It's not meant for that. Now going on up into the front area here, we're going up the hallway to our bathroom area. So right here, just outside of the bedroom is going to be your bathroom area. So kind of starting up top here, there is a vent fan up there, skylight up above, have AC duct in here, heat duct in here. You have the, uh, Step in shower with the glass enclosure, little sit down seat going on, porcelain foot flush toilet. Storage cabinet here is pretty deep. Pretty good amount of room for your towels and linens. Solid surface countertop here in your bathroom area. A little bit of storage here, but then you have some guts of the RV here. Central vac, it looks like, and the water pump system for winterization and stuff. So mostly just the storage there and your linen closet. Then you have a very large mirror right there. but a fairly reasonable size bathroom there. Plenty of room to get in and out of, get dressed, taking a nice shower in there. Digital thermostat for the main air conditioner up front and your propane furnace. And there you can see that central vac with the dustpan feature. Electric box with the breakers and fuses there as well. Now going up into the kitchen area, Quite a bit of overhead cabinet space. 
and you even have space on the top there where you can maybe set some decorations and stuff. Pretty deep cabinets. You do have full extending ball bearing drawer guided drawers. Double bowl undermount sink, high rise sprayer faucet. That window there does open. Furion oven has the light in it, glass front, three burner stove top, flip up and down glass lid there to give you some more counter space if you're not cooking. Big insignia microwave here. Then you have the Whirlpool refrigerator. That is a residential fridge. And then over here, we're gonna have the freestanding style dinette set up with four chairs. They are currently using that woven material on the slide floor instead of carpet or leno. It's a little more durable, easier to clean up than carpet. Big windows overlooking the rear side of the RV. You have pull down roller shades there. All of those windows in that slide open. You have big windows overlooking the front. Now the center window does open, but the two on the angled sides there don't open. Some large overhead cabinets up above. There is a ceiling fan up top. The main subfloor of the RV here, or the main floor of the RV, uh, it's plywood flooring and it has Leno ran down the whole length of the RV. Electric fireplace, which is basically a fancy electric space heater. You got Furion sound bar there, place for your TV, little shelf space underneath, some more overhead cabinetry. Now over here, you're gonna have the uh, awning in and out button, slide out for the front, the back slide out buttons in the back. You got uh, some light switches, outdoor speaker cutoff, dimmer switch, ceiling fan light, the suburban on-demand water heater control as well. And you got TV antenna booster button here if you're trying to pick up local channels. But overall, for the smaller Salem Villa floor plans, this is definitely a nice one for a couple and then possibly the occasional guest could sleep on the sofa area here. Now you had that uh, big sliding glass door that was behind me here. Uh, there is a screen. That screen usually is kind of stashed behind the uh, couch. When it gets to its destination, you pop the screen in. You can't travel with that in place. All right, we're gonna head outside. I wanna share around the outside real quick. Then we're gonna come back in, close it up for you, show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the outside. All right, we are back on the outside of the brand new 2024 Salem Villa 353 FLFB destination trailer here. We're gonna start here on the door side, kind of work our way around for you. So first things up, this one was ordered in the aluminum exterior. It's a wood studded constructed RV. You have a large power awning, LED light strip built in close to the body of the RV adjustable arms for tilting, and you also have manual override in the front arm head. As you've seen when we were inside, you have a nice sliding glass entry door in your main living room area here that is tented. Large folding entry handle to help you get in and out of that RV. Now on a destination trailer, they typically use these hover style steps. They're rated for 300 pounds. They fold back underneath the RV when you're not using it. So if you're gonna to try to travel with this, um, you know, you have those steps to get in and out of, but typically a lot of people buy these, they park them and they don't move them. They build decks around them and they never use those steps. So depending on what you're planning on doing, you do have the outdoor speakers here. You have your stove exhaust vent up there. There is the furnace exhaust right here. There's cable outlet right here, so you can put your TV outside if you want with an electric outlet there. Gravity fill fresh water tank located right here where you fill that up. And then you have your on-demand water heater there. Now just in front of the axles is going to be low point water drains. In case of winterization, that's where you drain out some of your water out of your lines. Dual axle unit, 
Easy Lube Hubs drum brakes. Traditional RV entry door in the back here has the window in it, you've seen, and it also has a screen door. And then you also have a little porch light up above there. Now in the back corner back here, there is another low point water drain down here. But also you can see there is a bracket on this RV to strap it down, tie it down scenario. Uh, some RV parks, depending on what part of the country you're in, like for destination trailers to be strapped down, block them, that type of stuff. Now this customer didn't order theirs with jacks. They're gonna take it and block it somewhere. Um, maybe take the wheels off kind of thing. But you can also get them with stabilizer jacks if you're gonna move them around a lot. On the back corner here, there is city water hookup and there's a cable inlet. And then right down here is your power cord hookup. So you hook up your power, your cable slash satellite back here and your water all in the rear. Now I got the uh, steps out here again today. Just wanted to show you real quick what the roof of one of these 353s look like. So as you can see, you're gonna have things up here like the plumbing stack vent over here, your AC, your roof vent, skylights, TV antenna way up there. So you do gotta get up here from time to time, inspect your roof, check your seams and your seals. Also, you can see here, this one had slide toppers over top of the rooms. So those right there are helping to shade the room. They're helping to repel a lot of water leaves, twigs, debris, that type of stuff. Now on the side here, you're gonna have a little bit of storage, goes underneath that master bedroom area. Down here, you're gonna have a gray tank and black tank dump, black tank flush also located right here. There is another gray tank dump up there. Again, be sure to check out the folks at Couches RV Nation, guys. They're one of the largest internet discount dealers in the country. They'll definitely save you a lot of money on a new RV if you're interested. They even have shipping available, so they can bring this right to your home or your campsite. Now right here, some very important informational stickers. So for example, this is what they call a dry weight sticker. This says it's 9,202 pounds, the way it rolled off the assembly line with these options. 37 feet, nine inches. Tire size here says ST20575R15E range tires with an 80 PSI cold. If you do travel, make sure you keep up with your tire pressure. Uh, gross vehicle weight right here was 11,535 pounds. It's the most you can load it up to axle weight, hitch weight, everything combined. Don't exceed that number, very important. Now when it comes to the dealership from the factory, and typically most dealerships leave this on so that it gets to you safely. It has kind of a corrugated plastic cover over the front to kind of protect those windows and stuff. It has two 30 pound propane tanks with the auto changeover regulator, manual tongue jack. If you do plan on traveling with it, I would recommend upgrading that to a power tongue jack. But if you're not traveling and you're just parking it, it's a waste of money, just go with the manual. Two and five sixteenths hitch ball, heavy duty safety chain, seven way barbed wire plug, there's a battery disconnect down here, and you also have room for one or maybe two batteries, depending on the size of the battery in there. All right, now I wanna head back inside, show you what this thing looks like all closed up. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, we are back up in the Salem Villa 353, and I just wanted to show you what it looks like closed kind of how it works. So when you are ready to close it up, you do have to move your 
reclining chairs over out of the way a little bit so that the slide can close properly. Now, if you're gonna travel with this, very important to make sure you position the chairs and maybe kind of strap them down so that they don't swing around and damage your glass door or your windows behind there. So that's kind of why I set them up this direction. Again, you should probably strap them down, but you don't want those backs just ramming into the glass. That would not be good if you're a traveling person with this thing. Uh, so basically, we're going to come back over here to our slide button, hit the button, and this thing basically kind of tilts upward, comes in over the main floor. Very, very important when closing or opening these things up to make sure nothing is in the way of the slide out. So when you're bringing it in, make sure your floor is clean. You do not want any rocks off your shoes or something or kids toys or whatever, pet toys getting trapped between that slide and the linoleum because it will rip and damage your floor. So when it's closed up, I can still come through my front door. You can kind of see here how tight that gets there. So you got to make sure your chairs are out of the way. But I could come through my front door. I could come into the RV. I could get stuff in and out of my fridge. I could come over here, maybe even cook a little something if I needed to. I could, uh, you know, wash my hands at the sink. I can come on through the RV and go back here to the back. Now when I'm back here in the back, I'm going to close up this part and you're going to come back here to your slide button. Push this button, kind of the same thing. It's going to tilt upward a little bit and come in. Now when this one comes all the way in, it gets very, very close to this closet area right here. Basically, the bed kind of touches that. You heard that little ratchety sound? That's a slip gear electric worm gear system. You just let off the button when it starts to make that noise. It's letting you know it's all the way in. But I could come in here now, when it's closed, if I was real skinny, I might be able to squeeze through there, but that's not me, unfortunately. So I would have to bump this out or go through the front door to get to the front half of the RV. But it only takes a few seconds to bump this thing out. These again are 12 volt powered slides. So as long as you have a good charged up battery, you should be able to roll this thing in and out pretty easily. But very simple. Now again, please be sure to check out the folks at Couches RV Nation guys. They're one of the largest internet discount dealers in the country. Will definitely save you a lot of money on a new RV. And if you don't mind, please hit that like button down below, help out my channel. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I do a lot of videos, try to update all the different models. There are so many different things kind of coming out in all these different floor plans every year. So it's kind of a continuous, nice job to have. All right, folks, thanks again for taking the time to watch my videos. I do appreciate it. 